Get ready to dive into a world of adventure, romance, and intrigue. This is Dat Suzoko, today we are gonna see. What if Naruto secretly son of Mamashiki? So let's move on to the video. He held on as much as he could, his clones and loyal partner Kurama, aiding him in this task as massive black orb size of the entire Chknin exam stadium, slowly descended towards them. Kurama, in form of his golden avatar, gathered Big Dama inside his mouth, in order to counter their enemy's assault. Fox turned his white orbs towards him, silently asking permission to do so. With a slow shake of his head, he reluctantly backed down. Too many people are here he thought as he gritted his teeth in frustration. Countering Otsutsuki's attack now would cause devastating effects on their entire village and its inhabitants. Baruto, Sasuke and Sarada under his protection will survive, however all civilians that his clones are protecting and everyone around Stadium will not. Even if durability of his clones increased over the years, he isn't so sure that resulting explosion of their combined attacks will leave them unscattered, or even if the village will survive. He can't risk it, he won't. He can hear them screaming his name, begging him to get to safety, and that he's done enough for them. He can't. It's his duty as a hokage to protect the village, his family, and that's exactly what he's going to do. Naruto looked over his shoulder to his astonished son and gave him a small smile. He could hear him calling out to him as Otsutsuki's attack finally connected and a booming explosion occurred. Uncertain amount of time passed and dark blue eyes were still foggy as he noticed many people running away in panic. One stood behind with a victorious grin as larger of Otsutsuki's approached him and grabbed his head pulling him above the ground. Before he had a chance to do anything else, he dropped him instantly as black-haired woman stood in front of him protectively, her Byakugan activated. Hi Hinata he managed to speak up, as she looked him with smile that would make anyone melt away. I love you don't worry about me. You know I can't do that. After that she shifted her attention towards two invaders, gaining a confident look. I won't let you touch him. He could barely make out image of his wife fighting off two invaders with everything she has in order to protect him. Then there was only darkness. Place him there. Understood, Mama Shikisama. Those two voices spoke again as he felt himself being bound by. What his eyes could make out was some giant tree of some sorts. His eyes flashed open, and he met stoic pale face of Otsutsuki Mamashiki while his guardian, Kinshiki hovered behind him. Something still didn't feel right. I'm sure I sense third presence, Naruto thought, his eyelids feeling heavier than ever before. His blue eyes met Mamashiki's activated Byakugan that was looking his stomach where Kurama was located. I see he hummed as he continued to gaze with mix of curiosity and wonder. Without any further words he extended his right arm, and Naruto felt sudden shift, followed by excruciating pain that tore through his body. A-A-R-G-H-H. -H. He clicked his teeth together as he felt Kurama's chakra being forced out of him and absorbed into his palm Renengan. Before he knew it, he passed out once again. He did that often during his captivity. His mind would fall in state of darkness only to jolt as more and more chakra got ripped out of him. Around one hour went by, and Naruto continued to thrash around, but to no avail. He couldn't do much in his current state with him being weaker than ever before. He still has power to fight them, but he needs to play the smart. If he was a kid he wouldn't hesitate to jump at them, throw a couple of Rasengans and Shadow Clones before calling it a day. And yet it's not that simple he knew very well that charging recklessly would prove to be foolish against opponents that are from same clan as Kagaya. He needed to play this smart if he wanted to get out of this predicament. Big guy, Kinshiki I think was his name Naruto looked said extraterrestrial as another jolt of pain traveled throughout his body, but he endured it, like all shinobi do. From what I saw he is the heavy hitter of the two proven by how he managed to destroy entire stadium with relative ease, by gathering energy on tip of his fingertips from Sasuke's reports, he was also the one that he faced at Kagaya's palace when he was searching for scrolls that she might left behind. Sasuke also informed me that he was capable fighter, fast and nibble, despite his size. He took few deep breaths before resuming analyzing the situation at hand. He has Byakugan and can also use various weapons, such as trench knives and kanabo, which is spiked or studded two-hand edward club, commonly used by samurais from Land of Iron. He glanced at smaller of the two, Mamashiki, his eyes narrowing. This one will be biggest problem. He has vast arsenal of jutsus stored in his left Renengan hand. If his extraction of Kurama's chakra that is currently conducted is any indication, his right Renengan is capable of absorbing chakra to greater extent than Pritapath. He even absorbed Shikamaru's shadow paralysis jutsu. 
It's safe to assume that he also possesses other abilities of Renengan Six Paths Techniques Diva, Ashura, Human, Animal, Preta, and Naraka in addition to summoning chakra rods. I know that I can resist most of them. I can break free from Diva Paths Chibaku Tensei with Karama, like I did when Nagato trapped me. I resisted Human Paths Soul Extraction when I was his first KCM, and much more inexperienced. I don't believe that these creatures have summons, so they won't use Animal Path. His expression turned grim, pre-taught path may prove to be a problem, but it has absorption limit, and it will be redundant to use it, when he has much greater absorption power through his unike Renengan ability. Naruto leaned his head backwards, a soft thud was heard as his nape hit, what he could now clearly register as type of Shinju, he knew that he couldn't go on like this anymore, massive stamina and chakra reserves would do him little good if he's gassed out by the time Sasuke arrives, pain that he felt now felt almost unbearable even worse than that time when Shinobi that was hired by Tsune ate all his limited edition cup ramen, but that's a story for another day, his eyes snapped slowly as realization dawned on him, pain, that's it? He closed his eyes again and began gathering massive amounts of nature energy that was spread around Mamashiki's dimension and slowly began mixing every last drop of it with Kurama's extracted chakra. Even if my plan works Naraka path may restore it. But I need to try at least. Good chunk of time passed once more before Mamashiki realized what he was doing. Oh, the alien actually let out surprise flicker across his face as orange shade began appearing in corner of Naruto's eyes. To think you vulgar creatures possess such unique chakra. Upon seeing this, Kinshiki's one exposed eye hardened. Yurashiki never mentioned anything about this. Naruto realized that they were talking about third member. With his six path sage mode, his sensing abilities skyrocketed to universal extent, and as such, he sensed everything in the village and beyond. He saw, now named Yurashiki extracting Mitsuki's sage chakra with what would seem like a red fishing rod. Gara did mention that he lost small chakra that Shukaku left behind after he appeared of Thunder Train when he was traveling to Kanoha. Even his sand couldn't block it. If he appears, I should just dodge whatever he throws at me. It would be catastrophic if he somehow gains access to my six paths Sinjutsu chakra. Not only that, but he also can copy any ninjutsu through chakra that he stole. Even more problematic is that he has red six Tomo Renengan similar to Sasuke's with ability to use Kagaya's teleportation jutsu. It's likely that he didn't know about it. Mama Shiki's voice snapped him from his thoughts. Regardless of that, I wouldn't put it past him if he chose not to report to the clan. See clan? Naruto's worst fears began coming true. How many of you are there? Horn creature scowled. It doesn't concern you. As a response Naruto gritted his teeth and tried to block any pain as extraction continued. He still amassed as much as nature energy as he could. Both Satsuki have massive chakra reserves, but everyone has a breaking point sooner or later. Even if side effects of too much natural energy don't fully affect him, he only needs to sabotage his palm Renengan, now he only needs to wait. Humor me. He finally spoke up. How many? Is there a leader of your clan? What was Kagaya's position in it? Be quiet. Mama Shiki sternly warned as his impatience slowly began to showing. TCH. Scowl remained on his face as he watched on with calculating gaze. Such ridiculous amounts of chakra, both from you and the fox you carry. It will be viable nursery, similar to one that binds you now. That Shinju was created from the one that bears same beast as you, Kinshiki supplied. Old man B. Naruto realized. It would appear that you'll provide chakra for even greater tree. Soon you will also become Shinju. Following Mamashiki's statement, few following minutes passed by, and he released his Renengan absorption with a grunt, letting Naruto catch his breath. This is taking far too long. He noted as he glanced at his hand. We didn't even reach halfway point. Head despite his weakened state. Naruto found it in himself to smirk. Sorry about that. You see we ninja don't like to make things easy. Our powers took time and hard work to master. Despite some being an advantage over others, we won't give up so easily. Mamashiki seemed to be amused by his statement, if his arrogant smirk was any indication. So what of it? You train, preserve yourself endlessly and it is pointless in the end. Such vulgar creatures. He shook his head. When you become chakra fruit you are just a fodder. He showed him red chakra pills. This is Sinabur elixir. Before I came here, I absorbed many jutsu. With this pills we can acquire power even greater than yours effortlessly, even if you took years to master them and obtain immortality. So Orange Hokage's face became solemn. It's just like scientific ninja tool. If you talked to me before, 
I wouldn't end up in this situation, he remembers it, his son was on verge of crying, those blue eyes brought sense of familiarity in him, how could they not, he saw the same look in the mirror for first 12 years of his life, I drove him to do it, that's why he relied on scientific ninja tool, I didn't even acknowledge him, treating him like a little kid instead, that's why he, garg, whatever he was going to say was cut short as pain once again coursed through his body. Be quiet and let us take your chakra. Mama Shiki began to extract his chakra again, and Naruto, despite his inner turmoil, amassed sage chakra. He neglected them. He was going to spend time with his family and try one of Hinata's homemade cooking for first time in weeks. But Shadow Clone's memories came back to him. Dear. I have to go. It's urgent. Baruto slammed his hands on the table. Why are you the one that has to go always? It's Hokage's duty to protect the village when it needs him. You understand? No, I don't. He stormed out of the house. Baruto, I'm sorry about your birthday. It's okay. I never expected you to come. But for Himawari, she's still little and she wants you there. Swear to me that you will come home. I promise. He lied. He even broke his nindum and couldn't keep his promise. No wonder he calls me stupid old man he inwardly cuckled as he looked at dark crimson sky on bare planet. Soon it will be time. His orange shade disappeared. I can't complain really. I was really bad dad ever since I took the hat. That won't happen. Naruto finally answered, his goofy grin making Utsutsuki perplexed. I plan to wrap this up and go home to my wife, son and daughter. After I beat you. Didn't you realize it? Mama Shiki shook his head, smirk present on his delicate features. This place will be your tomb. Naruto took few deep breaths. You said to me earlier that we're merely a fodder without chakra. That's not the case. When a person has something important they want to protect that's when they become truly strong. Mama Shiki quirked an eyebrow, but remained silent. Ken Shiki also listened intently, seemingly interested due to his line of work as Mama Shiki's guardian. Most of your power is artificial, so it's going to fail you. You only think about self-preservation and your greed for chakra. Kagaya operated the same way, and she was swallowed by her own twisted ideals until she perished. Is that so? His question was followed by a low growl. You are not the first one that said that to me and you most certainly won't be the last. All those creatures met their demise upon facing me. With my pills and arsenal of jutsu, you and your minions are nothing compared to me. Naruto laughed at that. It wasn't a mocking laugh, but more an amused one. You still don't get it, do you? A real shinobi is one who endures no matter what gets thrown at him. Let me explain something to you. There is only one thing that matters if you are a shinobi, and it isn't the number of jutsu you possess. All you do need is the guts to never give up. Naruto panted, taking a deep breath to prepare himself for upcoming battle. Before you say anything else, Orange Hokage continued as his hands slowly made pressure to branches that binded him. Look at you precious hand. What? Pure terror is what would describe Mama Shiki in Kinshiki's face face at the moment. Slowly but surely his palm Renengen began transforming into stone and it traveled across his entire arm. Taking advantage of his adversary's lack on focus, he broke free of the branches and grabbed Mamashiki's stone arm, much to extraterrestrial's surprise. Before he could react, he tore it off and began free-falling towards Root of Shinju. Mamashiki's painful scream filled the air as his once white Karajinu hunting robe now became stained in dark red blood. Damn it. He cursed, which was quite uncharacteristic for noblemen such as him. Grabbing his wound from which gallon of blood began pouring out of proved to be futile to stop the bleeding. Mamashiki sama Kinshiki worriedly called out at seeing his foster son in such state. Find him. He hissed as he swallowed a handful of pills that began regenerating his wound at slower rate than usual. Pain, however, still remained, much to his dismay. With a nod, enraged Kinshiki turned around, his Byakugan activated. Wine style. Race and shuriken. Several hundreds meters from Shinju, he heard that obnoxious voice, followed by a loud screeching noise as blue, swirling jutsu got hurled towards both of them. Kinshiki was on guard immediately and stood protectively in front of his foster son. Rasen Shuriken stopped before it hit them and was absorbed by his big hands. Chakra from the Jutsu allowed him to forge weapon of his choosing, which in this case was a giant axe. He can also absorb Jutsu? You will pay for that. With a speed that would betray his bigger size, Kinshiki glided forward and brought up his axe in arc of deadly precision. 
Naruto's eyes widened and he jumped to the side, glowing weapon of Utsutsuki made contact with ground causing a semi-explosion that shook them in the process, and covered entire field with black smoke. He skidded backwards, barely managing to keep his balance, only for bigger figure to be onto him, wielding his axe towards his left arm, and cutting it clean off. What? He looked on in state of bewilderment as his enemy poofed in cloud of white smoke. A fake? He saw Dosen clones clad in orange dashing towards him, spinning spheres of blue chakra in their bandaged right hand. With a grunt, Kinshiki's axe caused a shock wave after he swung with his entire body, eliminating several clones in the process. Despite his best efforts, most of them remained and were quickly to react. One of them clung to his arm like a peristant cockroach, while other knocked the axe out of the hand with his leg. They still clung on even after third clone slammed Rasengan into his gut sending him across the ground. A trench knife appeared in Kinshiki's hands, and he dispealed one of them, and threw the second one to the others. Before they collided with each other, Clone made several hand seals as he traveled through the air, and transformed into demon wind shuriken, that one Naruto caught. Without any hesitation, Shuriken was hurled towards bulkier man in straight line, and orange hokage wasted no moment before he made famous cross hand seal. Shuriken Shadow Clone Jutsu. Despite using his weapons to defend himself, Kinshiki still got cut by several shuriken that passed through. He quickly gathered lighting that is purple in color around his body, his commonly used cannabis in his right hand, with speed even greater that before he now began deflecting them with a reel of ease, each and ever one of them dispelling upon contact. With his Byakugan activated, he noticed a movement behind him and turned. His enemy was above him, with that pesky blue chakra shuriken in his hands. Before he had a chance to use it, Kusari chains raped around him and brought him harshly towards the ground. Another three tried to subdue him, but were all pierced with red stake that made them dispeel before they made any real attempts to threaten him. That was the plan for original Naruto that created a good opening. Gathering yellow energy in his right hand he blitzed towards the Tsutsuki that got caught off guard with speed displayed. He barely turned around, but without having time necessary to react efficiently, a golden fist smashed into his head, breaking apart his nose, lips and horns, alongside entire ground on which they were standing. He was launched backwards, spinning across the ground that got painted with his dark red blood. His broken weapons and pieces of clothes were scattered around the field as he crashed into the boulders that broke apart on top of him. Bastard. He hissed trying to get up, but failed to do so, instead falling back on the ground unconscious. TCH. Mamashiki grunted as he saw state of his servant. After he swallowed a handful of pills, a red and black gate with long tongue and pair of Renengan eyes began emerging from the earth only to retreat immediately back when spiraling sound was heard. Rasengan. Mamashiki was aware of Fox's jutsu in time and jumped away to dodge it, his heels landing with a soft click as he watched him emerging from smoke that occurred following his attack. Without further words he raced towards him and landed a quick jab from which he leaned backwards, he ducked under his left hook, but was caught off guard by a roundhouse kick that he half blocked with his single arm, the force of the kick sending him across root of the Shinju. He quickly recovered and decided to float above in hopes of getting more space, however, more and more clones began amassing and running towards him from each sides. Using his black receivers that is Renengan grants him he poked three of them, but one need him in the head, much to Tsutsuki's annance. Shinra Tensei, he exclaimed, force of his ability blowing away every clone that was close to him. Despite that, more and more clones appeared, overwhelming him as fight went by. Mamashiki rightfully got upset. Even if he hates to admit it, without his right Renengan and one arm in general, his combat ability got dulled, and he knew that he can't waste much chakra against these fodders. Even with his Byakugan on full display, he still can't distinguish the original from copies, because their chakra is evenly divided among them. Useful ability, albeit annoying one. Persistent vermin. Flying high in the air, he outstretched his single hand ahead catching everyone scattered around white area and Shikamaru's shadow paralyzes Jutsu. Using black receivers he disposed of every clone until none remained. Original Naruto observed the fight and created couple clones as he gazed on his unconscious opponent. Watch over him. He began running towards the battle in order to take care of Mamashiki. As soon as he got close to him, he grabbed black receiver with which he tried to stab him with twisted his body and kicked him aside much to his annoyance. Hokage stared at enraged Otsutsuki, I won't ask again. Gone was all his usual joyful personality. How many of you are there? Why are you collecting chakra? Who are you working for? 
I don't have any reason to disclose that to the likes of you, he told him in a matter-of-fact tone. Have it your way then, Naruto had it with everything, this pale bastard thrashed his village, injured his people, tried to kill his son, niece and brother, they hurt his wife, and tried to flat out kill him, by taking Karama's chakra, they threaten to destroy peace that previous generations build, he won't allow that, he flung into action again, Mama Shiki dodging his punch with a forearm, a left cross hit him across his cheek followed by a short curt elbow on his chin that made him bleed a little. He staggered a few steps backwards, his alien features showing concern for the first time. With him distracted this way, it was a perfect opportunity for Naruto to deliver a punch to his solar plexus, winding him for a bit. Another rod was thrusted towards him, which he broke by applying small amounts of Karama chakra to his hand. He grabbed Mamashiki by his horns and slammed his head in one of Shinju roots several times, breaking tree in one of his horns, leaving traces of blood across entire portion of the tree in which they fought. Gah, he caught up blood as he rolled across the floor trying to get up in spite his injuries. Talk, Naruto ordered, final warning. At that very moment his clone's memories returned in which he saw them getting defeated by Kenshiki. Booming explosion was heard on other side of the area. He saw larger Tsutsuki flying towards them, wielding a red scythe that was brought down towards him in an overhead slash. He jumped away from the Shinju that got one of its biggest branches cut off as a result of Kenshiki's rampage. It's time Mamashiki-sama. Hoarse voice came out of him as his blood dripped from his broken face. He looked at Naruto and he felt small remorse about doing all that damage to him. Kenshiki smiled. To protect something precious? Huh, I think I understand that. Naruto didn't say anything else, being on constant guard for their next move. Bulkier Tsutsuki turned to his foster son. Mamashiki-sama, just like my ancestor did for me, it's time for you to consume my chakra. He coughed blood. Please, don't weaver. I don't intend to, Mamashiki spat, disregarding him as mere tool, his gloved Renenkin hand, transformed his comrade into chakra fruit that he began eating, why you, his eyes widened at seeing display of cannibalism, he quickly recoiled from shock and cursed inwardly with ever intent to stop him, Mamashiki, though, was having none of it, Shinra Tensei, Repulsive force of diva path was enough to send him flying backwards, hitting numerous branches of Jayuki Shinju. White smoke covered the area for a few moments, and when it vanished, Hokage got better look at his new appearance that changed drastically. His right arm was still missing, instead of it, a white sleeve dangled freely in the wind. Upper half of his face was covered with radiating black markings that resemble sunburst patterns, one of his horns was still missing but left one was enlarged and curved back. He grew short claws on his fingers and toes, and his canines extend and resemble fangs. His hair changed, being long enough to reach lover part of his body. In addition, both his Byakugan and Renengan turn gold. You will pay for your insolence fox. A line formed on his forehead and it opened, revealing a third, gold Renegan. You're next. Your breath and Naruto got up, his fingers pressed in famous cross hand seal, but was blown away by his enemy, that unleash wind strong enough to cut the tree in half. He did that by his presence only Hokage exclaimed, only for his blue eyes to widen as he appeared in front of him, hitting Tenkatsu located on his abdomen and sending him crashing through one of the branches. He disappeared from his sight again and kicked him in his chest with such force that he spat out blood. With chakra and chant palm, he slapped him across the face pushing him aside and adjusting his single arm, landing an open palm strike to side of his face that opened a cut over his whisker marks. Going for a kick was proven to be inefficient as Mamashiki blocked it with his right leg and twisted his body in bend, hitting him with an elbow to his stomach. Before he had a chance to get his bearings together by creating another, although a mechanized arm through Shirado, Mamashiki created a chakra cannon that blasted him to the ground, ripping apart his shirt, jacket and bits of flesh, causing explosion that blinded entire area. Oh, after smoke from explosion disappeared, Mamashiki's brow raised as he saw Naruto kneeling on the floor, covered in red cloak of chakra that healed all of his wounds. Slapping his hand on branch of the tree he said with an amused smile. You chakra is quite versatile, but how will it fare against this? Inyakai Takeru no Makoto. Wood style Naruto exclaimed as several wooden avatars resembling rabid dogs, roared and began tracking him down with relentless determination. He leaped above them, gathering giant blue chakra that he slammed into avatars that got destroyed due to resulting shockwave. After he began falling towards the ground, 
He let out a cry of pain as one of wooden avatar bit down on his waist, pinning him to the ground. Thinking quickly, he used his forte, after Rasengan and Shadow Clones, his wind chakra, that coursed throughout his hands, that ripped into heads of the creature, beheading them as he did so. With a backflip, he evaded another one and quickly mixed Karama arm with his wind chakra, stopping its approach and crushing it completely. His victory was short-lived as he saw Mamashiki emerging from King of Hell, that consumed him during his brawl with wood avatars. Ultsutsuki stepped back with his horn arm and, now gold palm Renengan regenerated like nothing was wrong with them in the first place. With a feral smirk he charged forward, Naruto, getting striked by one hit, but dodging an open-palmed uppercut by a mere inch. It was far from over, however, with Mamashiki hiding him in chest, followed by a knee to the head that stung his face afterwards, warm liquid dripping down his face. Blood. He realized pain ripping through his body as he received another hit, this time in the right cheek with a style similar to Jiken, followed by a spinning punch that sent him sideways. Naruto tried to counter with a quick jab powered by yellow chakra, but Mamashiki restrained him by using his hair binding technique, to readjust his hand aside, until he lost focus on his chakra. Following that he attempted to hit him with two strikes, one of them being barely successful, while other was completely evaded. He wasn't phased by his failed assault, since a perfectly placed up kick sent Hokage soaring through the sky. Banshintenen, repulsive force brought Naruto back into his right hand that clenched his throat, drawing blood before he was slammed into the ground causing web-like cracks to appear on it. Fox is irrelevant for the time being. He brought him up, focusing his Rinnegan as he held his hand on top of his head. This Jutsu Naruto was covered in blood, full of bruised and cuts. He gritted his teeth as he tried to resist it. Human paths mind reading? Correct, Mamashiki confirmed, going through several memories, such as his childhood and Chknin exams. You endured quite a lot. Like as this shinobi as you said previously. He struggled against it. But Ultsutsuki held a firm grip on his scalp. To think that you vulgar creatures would be so knowledgeable about our Renengan, I suppose that I shouldn't be surprised after encountering your comrade that possessed one similar to mine. I see. Even if you were to die, Fox would reappear in different place over time. Shame of your chakra going to waste, but it is a necessary cost. A malicious grin formed on his face. I don't mind waiting. Die. At that moment, a burst of chakra erupted from Naruto, and he grabbed Satsuki's hand. Chakra covered his entire body and healed his injuries in the process. It formed yellow cloak with his undershirt being pitch black, with six glowing Nagatama surrounding his neck. Black lines ran the length of his arms and legs, with his eyes changing from regular blue to orange with black cross slits instead of his pupil. His whisker marks were darker and thicker. Naruto pushed Mamashiki who looked on cautiously before jumping away. Naruto blitzed him with a speed that he didn't expect it, slamming an elbow on his forehead, on his third eye specifically, that sent him rolling back with a cry of pain. Mamashiki adjusted himself, only for a chakra arm to clench around his form and pull him roughly towards pissed Hokage. With a battle cry he drove his fist into his face, sending him flying backwards yet again, his collisions with the ground sending debris flying everywhere. He kept on spinning until he went through a boulder, after which he plunged his claws into the earth to steady himself. That won't happen, Naruto declared boldly, six path sage mode Kurama cloak surrounding him, before he thought inwardly. You ready Kurama? Do you even need to ask? His loyal partner said, with playful sarcasm, let's do this, right? Naruto was about to spring into action, but stopped himself. With him absorbing ninjutsu, only tojutsu will work on him. In that case, it was a sound strategy, one that will surely work. His golden eyes that indicated six pats power bestowed to him by Otsutsuki Hagoromo disappeared, instead replaced by dark gold with a horizontal line, and fox slit with orange pigmentation on corner of his eyes. Albeit weaker than his previous form, it will be much useful against foe like Mamashiki. He needs to land an attack that he can't see. I see Nagato reminded you of it? Kurama inquired. Nagato. Naruto nodded glaring at his opponent as he slowly began walking to him. You. Mamashiki sneered. His clothes turn away and his black and white skin full of scratches and bruises. Byakugan and all three of his Renengan activated, latter being now red instead of regular purple. Several chakra pills formed from his Rinnegan, and he swallowed them, letting out an inhuman roar, while at the same time unleashing gust of wind that was blown towards Naruto, who raised his hands to cover himself before he resumed approaching him. 
You fool that dare to defy a god, it's time to end it, he stated. God, Naruto raised an eyebrow, you endangered lives of innocence and ate your comrade for the sake of power. At this point you're nothing more than a monster. The irony, he said calmly, if we're talking about monsters then that makes the two of us. Naruto responded with a stoic face. You want to talk about irony, Databeo, you speak of humans as lower beings, and yet at the same time you act like wild caged animal, by killing your own. Kenshiki cared about you, and you tossed him aside like he was thrash. He was a mere servant to me. Naruto growled, transfer of power. Mamashiki continued clenching his fist, that's the law of our clan, and nobody should defy it. Hokage snorted this time, Kagaya did, and for her betrayal, your planet will suffer, he spat with contempt, giving him a warning, chakra was never meant to be given to humans, like I said, you are also a monster, but even if by some miracle you do manage to defeat me, we won't stop coming until we drain this planet of all its chakra and finish the job that Kagaya started. With his sensing abilities, Naruto knew that this wasn't an empty threat. There was barely any life on this planet. It was a miracle how he even managed to gather nature chakra kappa bale of overflowing Mamashiki's chakra network. He reasoned that if he managed to go into regular sage mode when he fought Teneri in the space on the moon, then he could do it anywhere. After all, nature is everywhere, no matter how damaged it is like it was the case on this planet. Same as you did to this one? Precisely. Soon same will happen to your planet. No more words were spoken. Soft wind blew, ruffling their hair, as both of them stared down at each other for several moments. Huge shock wave occurred when they moved, becoming nothing more than yellow and white blurs that tore through the root of the tree, sending huge amounts of debris and branches of Shinju flying in all possible directions. They met at a single point, with Mamashiki stopping Naruto's hand by clenching it. Naruto doing the same by restraining his wrist, as both of them got caught in stalemate without any sort of advantage over the other. Mamashiki planned to change that by jerking his hand out of his grip thrusting his now free left palm forward only for Naruto to cling to his right hand and jump over it before attempting to hit him with spining back fists that Otsutsuki blocked. Byakugan Wilder pressed on going for two hit strikes that Naruto dodged before unexpected happened, and he drove his chakra-powered clawed palm into his liver, making him grit his teeth at ensuring pain, a well-placed Ken strike sent him stumbling few steps back. With his Karama cloak in sage mode, he was quick to recover and did a backflip until he landed a considerable distance from him, slightly panting. If I can't use Jutsu, then he punched the ground causing debris to fly in the air before he began kicking them at his opponent, using chakra arms in addition to throw them for better results. Couple of them managed to graze him, but he made a short work on them with a single Shinra Tensei, just in time to see huge kunk of earth heading in his direction. With a low growl, he used Kenshiki's ability and formed a blade that sliced through the boulder like knife through butter. They raced towards each other, becoming nothing more than blurs once again that tore through the ground itself. Otsutsuki tried to slash Naruto's shoulder with crimson weapon. Orange Hokage foiled that plan by catching the blade and snapping it in half before he was pushed aside, Mamashiki going in his usual fighting stance. From there on a more fierce tojutsu battle commenced, both of them failing at any endeavor at hurting the other and running into a stalemate once again rather, Naruto would evade most of Jkenken's strikes while Mamashiki blocked his attacks. Eventually, Naruto managed to swat away his hand as he landed a solid hit on tip of his nose that did more damage than it should have under normal circumstances, due to nature energy surrounding him. He twisted his body to evade his elbow, grabbing his hand before kicking him away once again. Angered by this, Mamashiki tried to retaliate by throwing a low kick that was stopped when Naruto raised his knee. Adding additional strike to his throat that was meant to be lethal proved to be useless as Naruto side-steeped and focused his energy into his fist, going for his head. Heh. Mamashiki jumped sideways, arrogant little smile on his face, as Punch missed him completely. Your effort is... Bam. Or so he thought. For a reason unknown to him, a invisible energy gathered causing him to receive a full hit, and was sent reeling on the ground from the impact of Naruto's attack as a result. H. How Mamashiki's wondered, flabbergasted by this new development. He went through memories that he read when he had a grasp on his mind, but nothing came up. I suppose that link was cut off before I had a chance to get to that part. 
He chose to leave that thought for the later. Extraterrestrial got up, creating black receivers and red stakes, sending them hurling towards him, which Naruto deflected by flaring up Kurama's chakra and racing to him, engaging in Tajutsu clash again. He caught his hands, hitting a Tenketsu point located near his ribs. He winced pain flaring through his body, but Naruto endured it, countering with cross left cheek. He blocked Otsutsuki's venture to damage his thigh with his leg immediately after, but was still hit in his midsection, lossing his balance for fraction of a second. Mumashiki twisted his left foot at 360 degree, aiming for a head kick that Hokage avoided by skin of his teeth. As he turned to face him again, Naruto managed to push him back with his front leg and land a devastating strike when he was at his arm's length. He wanted to use a very special tojutsu move similar to Frog Ku might utilize previously. He landed open hand strikes with both of his hands on each side of Mumashiki's head, using all strength he had at the time. Attack sends ripples of natural energy that emanate through the struck target, from the initial point of contact. As he was hit on each side of his head, nature energy met in the middle, making his entire experience with Tajutsu move very unpleasant, evident by current state of his opponent. YUW what did you do? Mumashiki covered his ears, blood flowing freely from them, his Byakugan deactivated for the time being. He clenched his fangs and was barely aware of Naruto curling his hand into fist and going for another punch which connected, making him spin through the air and harshly falling onto the hard ground. He steadied himself, ignoring pain that flared up in his nose and ears. Naruto carried on with his assault, this time Mamashiki dodging by moving to the side, as second punch barely missed his face. Small smirk found its was on Genin turn Cage's face as he did so. Frog Kumite took effect once again force of natural energy, sending him crashing to a stump of the Shinju, making dense size of his body in it. I don't think that he will try to dodge again. After getting hit twice by seemingly invisible punches, he reasoned that Mama Shiki would be more cautious when he engages in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Since it is most likely that we won't try to dodge his attacks anymore, Naruto planned to overwhelm him with added boost that six paths Sinjutsu provides him. With better protection, durability, speed and power, he will stop him as soon as possible and return back home to his family. He leaned his body forward, disappearing in golden blur and emerging in front of him. Mumashiki formed a red shield from his chakra and braced himself for a punch that rocked the earth itself, damaging what's left of the Shinju even further, making several branches fall off of it and breaking the shield upon impact. From look of surprise that was on his face, Mumashiki could tell that there was something different about him, undoubtedly noticing his increase in speed and strength. Afterwards he decided to go for a spinning axe kick that was half blocked when he put up his hands in cross shape. Mumashiki grabbed his leg, spinning him and open palm strike found its way to his chest, sending him across red sky of bear planet. He slammed his hand on the ground, wooden avatars emerging once again that flew into the sky in pursuit for the hokage. Naruto let out a yelp of pain as they caught up to him bidding down on his waist. He focused his six path senjutsu chakra in his hand and cut its head off, breaking free from his binds, levitating in the sky. He quickly formed a rasen shuriken and threw it, sharp wind chakra of the jutsu, cutting off and destroying every wood-style creature in sight. Before it continued to travel through the sky, Mumashiki's eyes held a hungry gleam in them, and without any hesitation, he began flying in direction of the rasen shuriken. Why would he do that? Naruto went after him immediately, gliding into the sky in pursuit of horned individual. There is no question that he's hiding something, possibly another ability that I'm unaware of. Either way it's better not to risk it. With his activated by Akugin, he was alerted of his presence right away and slammed his foot into his chest before he had time necessary to react. Impact of the attack sent Naruto spiraling downward, red kusari chains tightening firmly around his form. He struggled against his binds and crashed into the ground just in time to see Mamashiki absorb his jutsu and heal himself of all previous injuries. This is fine ability. You have my gratitude. He told him, his voice taunting, his left arm raised above his head that unleashed Rasen Shuriken twice its previous size. Now die. He can unleash absorb jutsu even more powerful he only now remembered that he was able to use Shikamaru's shadow paralyzes on shadow clones that were trying to restrain him. I was careless. Shit. Naruto cursed, breaking free from the chains as Rasen Shuriken alongside another fire jutsu, 
that combined with it into a swirling vortex of fire chakra came down towards him with a rapid speed, making contact with him and creating an echoing explosion, he summoned Kurama's avatar head, which managed to sustain the attack. Chibaku Tensei, orange eyes narrowed in concern when he saw Mamashiki clasp his hands together, right after the fact, he sensed a gravitational pull, as he and rubble all around him got harshly yanked from the ground towards the center of already half-formed sphere. Cage Heath Arson Prison, Pale Celestial declared, molding fire-based chakra at one time and Enka seizing Naruto in a flaming red and yellow cage. He cleansed his fist with additional pressure and heat burning him from jutsu causing a small explosion before he was finally trapped inside completed Chibaku Tensei that floated in the clouded crimson sky. Letting out a breath of exhaustion, Mamashiki swallowed couple of pills that remained, but got frustrated at such small amount that he had left. To think that I would be pushed this far. His thoughts were interrupted when an intense howl echoed through the air, Kurama's head poked out of the sphere construct, unleashing a fire as it dug its way up of it, gold by Akigen widened upon seeing his Chibaku Tensei crumbling within mere seconds, despite his effort placed in making it. A golden fox with nine tails and several pitch black marking emerged from it and landed on the ground, impact of it causing a semi-earthquake to occur. So, it finally appeared in its full form. Celestial being noted, discarding shred of the clothes that remained as several vines and roots emerged from the ground, forming into massive wooden monkey with constant fire coursing through his body. On top of it, Mamashiki stood, getting ready for a fight. He stretched both of his hand outwards, wooden dogs and bigger dragon, similar to one Hashirama used emerged from Shinju stump, and bit down onto Kurama's arm and legs. With a howl he ripped them apart, his chakra arms aiding him as he did so. Naruto caught sight of wooden dragon going for his neck, but he extended length of one of the tails that intercepted it. Tail turned into massive chakra arm and applied pressure to it using six paths and jutsu chakra crushing it before it made any more moves against him. Naruto was never more grateful about six paths chakra than he was now. With it, even if wood release is natural counter to Biju, he can still overpower it due to height and strength, speed and durability that it grants its user. From the looks of things, Kurama also seems to engage it, which isn't surprising, since enemies used wood release to restrain him in the past quite a few times. Aside from training with Captain Yamato and Mogi, now he finally has a chance to fight with someone that uses one of his most hated techniques after the Sharingan and not be completely vulnerable to it. Ha 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 ha, it was meant to be a mocking laugh, but with his deep voice, he ended up sounding like cliche villain from Saturday Morning Cartoon that Baruta watched when he was a kid. He tore through another wooden construct, crushed the second one, and stomped with his feet on the third one, all while taunting their enemy. You have no power here. With a growl from the alien, a flaming dragon hit him into his chest pushing him back a couple of steps. He squeezed it with all of its force until it faded, only as sparkles of fire remaining. Monkey punched Kurama Arcus the face and grabbed one of his tail, spinning him around and slamming him into the ground, impact causing a huge shockwave. Wooden creature continued to pour punch after punch on Kurama's face, who raped two of his tails around its arm, stopping him in place. Naruto scowled at his predicament, sensing movement to his left, and seeing a giant flamed pheasant that was undoubtedly created by Mamashiki from lava underneath the ground. Upon taking flight, the pheasant swooped down at him. Naruto brought his arm and caught it, but it still exploded when it got close to him, disturbing his vision for brief second. Let's end this. He tightened the grip on wooden arm that was restrained by Kurama's tails and broke it off giant monkey stepping back, which gave Naruto and a time to jolt back onto his feet. Naruto engaged expression of Mamashiki's face when he saw that he was still capable of flying in Kurama's avatar. He dashed towards him and grabbed the monkey by the neck flying high into the air and slamming him close to the Shinju, breaking him apart. Before Celestial Being had time to recover, blow from two large yellow chakra fists destroyed what was left of wooden construct on which he was standing, causing explosion of fire that spread in the area. He landed back on the ground, his Kurama avatar, chakra mode and six paths power disappearing. It's not over yet. Kurama reminded him. I know. And since all jutsu we throw at him will just backfire, we must get rid of his Renengan again to end him. Naruto had an idea how to pull it off, and he had to do it quickly. Mamashiki pulled himself from the Shinju on which he fell after his creation got destroyed. His white pants were torn and stained in blood, and numerous cuts adorned his body. 
Over and over again, he growled, gulping down handful of pills that healed him. From all creatures that I encountered during my lifetime you are easily most persistent. So, I've been told many times. His gold Byakugan activated, Naruto took a kunai and braced himself, flashing towards him at impressive speed. Mamashiki used black receivers and launched them at him with intent to restrain him. But Naruto flung them away? his kunai sending sparks as they clashed together. Naruto bounced of a branch and felt a gravitational pull that sent him in direction of his opponent, who clasped his left hand on his neck squeezing it. It's over. He released him when clone poked out of the ground in between them, and aimed an uppercut at Mamashiki's chin, who was aware of it with his activate by Akigen. With a smile, he held up his Renengan hand with attempt to absorb the clone, but Naruto quickly dispeeled it launching itself towards the rin again and driving the kunai through until it punctured his hand. You worm. Utsutsuki let out a deafening shriek, sensing chakra from the kunai, but deciding to punish him first before he looks into that. Rage took him over as he formed a crimson blade and brought it down on his head. Naruto tried to move to the side to avoid it, but he still got caught, although on a different part of his body. Sickening sound of flesh being torn was heard as Blade cut off Naruto's bandaged artificial limb and send it rolling on the floor. Hokage bit on his lowered lip pain traveling through his body. He jumped away and landed on rocky ground just in time to see Mamashiki's chest open up to reveal fully formed chakra cannon that Rinnegan's Shuriden grants him. His eyes widened as Celestial unleashed powerful blue chakra blast. Earth release. Earth style wall. After having difficulty at the beginning, he went through one-handed hand seals and slammed his hand on the ground. Huge wall of solid earth rose up, taking full hit of Mamashiki's blast and breaking apart from intensity of the attack but still saving him. Naruto huffed and took off his torn orange jacket, sweat covering his face as he made a seal. It's time to end this. Mamashiki recoiled in shock, inwardly cursing as hundreds shadow clones came to life and launched themselves at him. He ducked under one and kicked the other but was surrounded by more clones that began appearing in every possible direction. Shinra Tensei. He screamed, repulsive force of Diva Pat's pinnacle ability, sending every clone in his vicinity flying away. Don't let up, we're almost there one of them yelled, making one hand seal that created two more, before he exploded in a puff of white smoke. To his utter horror, this kept repeating that over and over again. Before they would disappear, another one or two would pop up and take his place, rendering his ability mute. He focused more chakra in it, even being forced to deactivate his Byakugan because of it, but they still wouldn't let up. Reluctantly, he let go of his jutsu, Byakugan activated once again, and focused on dodging and quite frankly, surviving the clone's attacks, but went in the air when one managed to punch him. You. Zu. Ma. Kai. Three other clones landed several punches and kicks, sending him upwards, when he caught sight of another one who came down at him with a somersaulting heel drop, which he blocked with his hands, force still sending him downwards where landed on his feet. With a shake of his head to clear his thoughts, he used another Shinra Tensei to dispel another bunch of clones. Smoke that they produced after their defeat cleared away, showing a bright whirling chakra shuriken that was heading straight towards him. A golden barrier formed around his figure as it got absorbed into his body. He disliked this ability, it was completely inferior to his unique ability, but seeing how his Renengan got destroyed yet again by Fox's weapon, he should be grateful that he even has this one to protect himself. His weapon realization hit him, as his Byakugan noticed that Chakra still coursed through metal object, despite not being in close to the user. Puff. Immense pain was all that he felt following that annoying sound. His hand was blown away, blood flowing out freely as he hissed, what would seem a permanent scowl made its way on his face ever since he had displeasure of meeting such impudent animal. Clone that transformed from the weapon and destroyed his hand rolled on the stump of the tree and immediately went into action, but was quickly dealt with when he punctured him with a red sharp stake courtesy of Kinshiki's ability. Rasengan. He averted his gaze upwards, another one, presumably original was in the air, gargantuan rotating sphere of blue chakra in his left hand that was brought down towards him. Wincing, he didn't have enough concentration or time for that matter, to use pre-top path to absorb it, he didn't even think that he could at this point. Instead he extended his arm, red rotating chakra of same shape and size came out of his rinnegan. Their clash resulted into an earth-shattering shockwave that devastated the land on which they fought and tore through what was left of the Shinju. 
Naruto pressed on, pushing harder than ever before, thinking about everything he's fighting to protect and everyone that helped him make a man he is today. Images of all his immortant people flashed through his mind, Haku, Zabuza Team 7, Kanoha 12, Iruka Sensei, Iro Senen, Tsunade Abachan, Shizun Wonchan, Gara and his siblings, Nagato, Konan, Yuhiko, Mom, Dad and more importantly his family that he has right now. Family that he neglected for his bad reasoning and with which he will make amends once he returns to them. He won't go back on his word this time. Hinata, Himawari, Baruto. I promise that I'll make it up to all of you. Blue Orb pushed the red one back until it burst, burning away his skin up to his elbow, and ramming itself onto the target as he twisted his Rasengan, that evaporated everything that it touched in their vicinity. Naruto yelled pushing further as his opponent looked on in disbelief, his figure becoming red from his jutsu's intensity, and blinding everything in his sight. Can you feel my presence Fox? What? Naruto recoiled in shock, seeing pale face of pre-absorbation Mamashiki staring at him, analytical expression on his features. His Byakugan was deactivated, but it still felt like it could gaze into his soul. They were floating in some clouded orange and crimson space with what would look like several pieces of wood from Shinju on which they fought previously. Taking his gaze downwards, he saw a black, endless void. Kurama, he telepathically called out to his partner. What's happening? Nothing. There was no answer. Oi, Kurama, are you there? Answer me. He can't hear you, Mamashiki told him, as if reading his thoughts. What did you do to him? I wanted for this to be a private conversation. He's safe. Byakugan was activated at this point, staring into his blue eyes. I see. When you were a child, you already proved by defeating one with the eyes similar to mine. That fate isn't set in stone. Remarkable. Yuzumaki Naruto, you truly do have a power to defy fate. His face showed surprise that he spoke to him by his name, instead of using some degrading nickname. However, a solemn expression was on his face when he heard Niji's name. Mamashiki undoubtedly gained the information when he read his mind. Otsutsuki's white eyes narrowed. Your inventions and naive misplaced trust you have in people will only prove to be your downfall in the end. Naruto's blue eyes widened in fraction, before dangerously hardening. Explain. It wasn't supposed to end like this. He spoke up again, ignoring his question. However, seeing that you are too weak to deal with others, it will be beneficial for your people if you do receive it. Mamashiki took a hold of his left arm, feeling tingling sensation coursing through his body. Remember this, those who defeat gods cannot remain ordinary individuals. He began fading away in form of a dust. Reflect well upon my words, as you proceed with your actions in the future fox. Then he was gone. He was back in the real world, Rasengan finally separating from his hand as he fell on the floor with a thud. Shinju was completely obliterated and attack continued to travel on at a rapid speed, breaking away ground and soaring into the atmosphere after it separated the clouds where it finally bursted into small particles of blue light. It was over. Sense of relief washed over Naruto's body, just like a nice warm broth from Ichiraku Raymond. He got up from the floor and headed towards, now destroyed Shinju, looking on at the warm sunlight that reached through dispersed clouds for first time ever since Mamashiki ravaged this place. No one he really thought about it. Entire planet is a one big cementary that was filled up by two members of Otsutsuki clan. Only two did this. His voice was just above whisper as he looked into the sky, imagining about all future enemies. How many of them are out there? Are we really safe? With a shake of his head he jumped down and digged through the rubble until he found his orange jacket and pulled it on. It got its right sleeve cut off, but it is fine since his arm went rolling somewhere, probably destroyed already from their battle. Entering sage mode confirmed it. Since he couldn't sense any chakra that arm would radiate with. It's a miracle how the jacket survived in the first place. Naruto. His gloom expression was replaced by a bright smile when he heard that voice. Kurama, thank god that you're okay. What happened to you? I really do not know myself. He admitted before elaborating. Our connection was cut off for a brief moment and when it returned, Kurama paused chossing how to form his next words. You seem different. What happened there? Serious look was on his face now. I can't explain it because I don't really understand it myself. During out final clash he pulled me into some sort of pocket dimension, where he began saying how I defied fate, and said that those who defeat a god cannot remain normal. It would seem that he was arrogant until the very end. Kurama joked, although it fell flat in the current situation. I sense chakra of third presence in your body. 
I know. He looked at the palm of his hand that was now completely healed from burns, his eyes widening when he was a black diamond-shaped seal resting on the center of it. Curse mark? He said aloud. Probably some seal similar to it. It would seem that they operate similar Arachimarus, he told him. He also transferred his chakra to his targets, and Mamashiki's chakra is surely the one that is present in your body right? He clenched his fist, determination settling on his face. No power comes without a price. He wouldn't do this as he won't benefit from it. Whatever the case, we'll have to look closely into it once we return home. Even Sasuke might have heard something about this during his travels. Sounds like a plan. Naruto was sure that he heard a playfulness in his voice. How do you plan to return home again? And just like that a serious demeanor was dropped, replaced by one of panic and hopolescence, his jaw hanging open in shock. Shit. He flapped his hands around in frantic matter. How the heck are we going to return back? We're stranded on foreign planet with no life. You have shadow clones. Not funny Karama. Naruto countered, gaining a laugh from his partner. Damn it he continued to rant on with a small pound, he kicked one of the small pebbles and watched it roll. To think that I'm going to die like this, I should have finished my training with dad's Horatian no jutsu. I've been saying that to you for years, and you never picked it up again. With your clones in my chakra, it would be easy to escape this dimension, if you have Mark placed in Konoha. You could have even sent a shadow clone or two, and help out Sasuke through dimension to scout out for dangers. Kurama reasoned, now you can only wait until Sasuke arrives. Good point. Naruto rubbed his temple with his hand, and in a quick flash, exited massive crater that his fight with Mamashiki caused. He looked on in surprise, size of it easily bigger than Konoha, although not by large margin. I tried, but I really fell out of the focus. He sheepishly admitted as he walked around aimlessly. Although I did better than dad's guard, it was different than anything I learned before. All those seals are complex. Then I had to study, got married to Hinata, had Baruto, Himawari, became hokage, got drowned in paperwork. Life happened, Dadabeo. Then let this be a wake-up call to you. You can't slack off and pretend that everything will be fine, when the reality is that it won't. Kurama sternly warned. What if something like this happens again, and Sasuke isn't there to bail you out? You could be at their mercy if they use space-time ninjutsu to transport you to their dimension. Also, Mamashiki brat hinted that they report their activities to his clan, which means, clan will be alert of their absence, since they won't return. Naruto grimly concluded, chewing on his lower lip in worry. Mamashiki said that he gave me this seal, because I won't be strong enough to stop others. No matter how much I hate to admit it, he might be right. We don't know what's out there. He shielded his eyes from the sunlight, watching beautiful crimson sky with determination settling on his features. But we'll face it, together. Naruto concluded with a grin that Kurama returned. No matter what challenges awaits for them, they will get through this like they always did. He's sure of that. Now only if Sasuke would show up already. Contrary to popular beliefs, Baruto loves his father dearly. He was always there for them, playing with them, teaching his sister and him basic principles of ninja arts, and etched life lessons that he learned during his early childhood. Years before he took the hat were the happiest Baruto ever experienced, because his hero and person who he most looked up to at the time was always present in his life. People across entire world held his father in high regard and often told him about his accomplishments during his youth, specifically when Fourth Great Ninja War took place, after which he was labeled as hero and savior of the world. Thinking that some stories are exaggerated, he was a bit incredulous at first, but as time went by, he realized that there was weight to their words. When he was a child Baruto overheard his parents conversing about his mission that he took part in before he became Hokage a number of times. They often varied from A to S ranks, with occasional B rank now and then. That alone should have been proof of his father's capabilities as a shinobi. More surprising, however, was the duration of the missions and state in which his dad always returned. Not only did he return back to them in day's time, but injuries that regular ninja would sustain from such high-ranking missions were non-existent on him, which only enforced his view of his father's strength. View that, unfortunately, began diminishing over time. He was always called a bright and smart child, stemming from two powerful bloodlines, his abilities and potential as a ninja are second to none. And yet no matter how badly he wanted to create his own path and distinguish himself from his father, it still wasn't enough for people of the village too to see him other than Naruto's son. 
Even when he learned shadow clones by himself, people were acting like it was a normal everyday thing. Because it shouldn't be surprising that son of a war hero and strongest cage in history learned B rank technique before he even began Academy, a technique that is used commonly by Jonans to boot. It irritated him to no end. His blonde hair, whisker marks and blue eyes that strongly resembles his father's only made that task that much more difficult, and he constantly remained in his shadow, despite his best efforts for others to see him in his own light. Every single person in the Kanoha, even before his dad became head of the village, had high expectations for him, and Baruto was always pressured to deliver. Pressure that became heavier when his father finally achieved his lifelong dream by becoming Hokage. Slowly admiration that he had for him began turning into resentment due to his absence from their lives that followed. If stories that he was told were true, he won battles in the war using only shadow clones. If so, then he should have no problem to create couple of clones that would take care of extra paperwork so that he could return home to them earlier. He refused choosing to spend time in that dreadful office, drowned in piles of papers, and leaving his mother to take care of them. So he acted out pulling numerous pranks against him in desperate need for attention that was only given to him in form of regular lectures and scoldings that only angered him further. This cycle continued on for several months, years even during his academy education, until Baruto chose to act indifferent towards their relationship, or better yet lack of it. He didn't care about himself anymore or the pressure that others placed on him for being Hokage's son. However, he still remained upset when his father neglected his mother and sister. Unfortunately that pressure returned tenfold when he was unable to stop White Zetsu during Team 7's mission. That was first time that he felt utterly useless against his adversary. To become stronger not only to beat his dad for sending Shadow Clone to his sister's birthday, but to pull his own weight in the exams and not to disappoint, he began his Rasengan training like Sasuke told him with Kanohimaru's guidance. His attempt at making a rank jutsu was pitiful to say the least. He felt awful about and that feeling only increased when Sasuke-san, despite his failure, still took him under his wing, because of what Baruto believed was his status as Naruto's son. Baruto was a prodigy, and he knew that he had skills necessary to compete. But there was always small voice in his head telling him that he isn't good enough, that B would fail, and make a mockery of himself on international competition. His confidence was shaken from his inability to fight Zetsu, and that was the moment he reached his breaking point, and took coat from Katasuke. He knew that it was wrong to cheat, but he was driven by his emotions at the time. You can't simply win when you're son of influential persons such as Hokage the great hero of the war. People want to see greatness from you. His family, friends, even his father wants to see him succeed, despite not teaching him a single thing, since he was a kid. If he won his fights, everyone would say that he did so because it was expected of him. He is the Hokage's son after all. Baruto can't even imagine how bad it would look if he fell in the second round to that team from Karigakur. If he by any chance lost there, people would be disappointed, badmouth him and call him a disgrace to Hokage's name. His dad stripping him of his shinobi status and saying that he will talk to him later despite never doing so before made him snap. From Academy Days Iweb and Sarada told him to look at things from different perspective. Hokage wouldn't be put on such high pedestal and respected by every person alive if he didn't have skills necessary to back it up. By all means, Baruto disagreed with them because all evidence later on pointed to the contrary. After taking that job his dad spent most of his time in the office and didn't do a thing to help out in their household, leaving his mom to take care of everything. He slept in late, put on his shoes the wrong way, and ate that Raymond to sum it up, he was really uncool in Baruto's eyes, and not the image of war hero like everyone depicted him to be. Until recently that is. Stories of old can't even compare to sheer power that his father displayed during invasion of two pale creatures with Byakugan. Baruto began seeing him in new light. His warm chakra coated everyone like shield to protect them from ensuring explosion that occurred afterwards. If he wanted to, he could have countered Black Orb with ease like Sasuke San said, but everyone would die if he did it. From that statement alone, it was clear to Baruto that his father willingly chose to sacrifice himself to ensure others' safety, to protect his family, and he did just that. Seeing this, he slowly began realizing spiritual heritage that older generations, his father included, embodied will of fire. To treat everyone in the village as a family and for shinobi to believe cherishes, and fight to protect the village, as previous generations had done before them. 
Although he disliked such ideal at first because he saw it only for a lame excuse for his father to neglect his true family, resolve in his dad's eyes and selfless attitude in face of certain death proved him otherwise. Now he can only hope that they can get there in time to help him defeat those invaders that according to his father and Sasuke, are members of same clan from which progenitor of Chakra herself originated from. Baruto knows that he shouldn't go because quite frankly he doesn't have any right to be involved in a fight with godly threats, but Sasuke Sen for God knows what reason vouched for him when other cages were against it. Now he can do his best and provide assistance in any way possible if needed. Here is the plan. Sasuke's voice broke him from his thoughts as he looked on ahead. They recently jumped through the portal that is Renengan created and began traveling through different dimension. It honestly felt like something from Kajimasa movies that he often watched. If situation wasn't so serious, he would be more excited about opportunity to travel to different worlds. First we need to free Naruto. Although we can do to forced extraction, I can still strongly sense his chakra. Six paths connection? Shijuro inquired. Correct? Shadow Hokage nodded. We can still sense each other because of yin and yang power Otsutsuki Hagoromo granted us in the war. Baruto raised a brow at this. He never would have thought that both his dad and master obtained power from father of shinobis. He shook his head as his blue eyes took more determined look. This was not the time to concern himself with such trivial things. As we all already know, we will be facing three Otsutsuki, each with their own unique set of skills. Sasuke continued. I recommend me taking care of the one with the fishing rod, seeing that I have most experience dealing with the Renengan, and can quickly evade his attacks that steal Jutsu, due to my speed and Renengan teleportation. Aren't we a little arrogant? Kuritsuchi playfully commented, and Sasuke responded with a smirk. From what you told us about Kenshiki's abilities, it would be wise for Chijuro and me to face him. Suchikage supplied, feeling rush of excitement traveling throughout her body. Even as a respected cage, she still retained boisterous approach in fights against strong opponents. Chijuro's mastery over Kenjutsu will keep him busy, and since he doesn't have any absorption power like other two, I'm free to use my earth and lava release. Speaking of which, Mamashiki's ability to absorb ninjutsu will be quite problematic for all of us. Gara's monotone voice added, That's why I will be most adequate to fight him. My San can keep him at bay since he can't absorb it, while Darui overwhelms him with his tajutsu. Sasuke nodded, satisfied at their plan before he turned to his apprentice. Baruto, for the time being you stay aside. If we all fall then you need to act and use your Rasengan. Baruto's face took more of a somber look at his statement. But my Rasengan is. Don't worry about it, Sasuke interrupted him with a smile. Just trust me, right? He nodded, seeing the end of portal fastly reaching. They exited Sasuke's portal and began dropping towards the ground, their eyes widening his disbelief at sight of massive destruction and ruined stump of a tree that was in this dimension. What? They landed with barely any sound as any trained shinobi should. Baruto's heart was racing each and every moment spent looking at demolished landscape. There is no sight of invaders anywhere, but his father his father was also missing. Did they fight already? He ignored Uncle Gara's voice and began searching for any clues that might hint on his father whereabouts trying to blink away tears that were threatening to fall from his blue eyes. He wobbled slightly, but steadied himself tureening his gaze downwards and seeing piece of orange fabric that was stuck underneath a rock over which he almost tripped. Dad, now that you mentioned it, Grandpa used to be a hokage too. But dad says that when he was a kid, Grandpa Hokage wasn't even in this world anymore. That means dad grew up not knowing a thing about this enjoyable father-son situation, didn't he? Dad is the only one who doesn't know what this is like. If he was going to be like this, then it would have been better if he was never here from the beginning. Baruto doesn't know when tears began streaming down his face. His knees hit the ground as small whimpers escaped his lips as he held shredded piece of his father's jacket, like his life depended on it. On outside Sasuke's face was still stoic as ever, seemingly calculated as it surveyed situation at hand. On inside however, he was in turmoil with himself. When he stepped through a portal he noticed that he couldn't sense Naruto's chakra anymore. He wrote it off to a mere moment, but now that he was here it became clear to him, his brother in all but blood eater left this dimension and traveled to another one, where their six paths connection can't reach him or he. He shook his head trying to clear his mind of such thoughts. Jumping to conclusion right now would do him little good. If history thought him anything, then it's that Naruto always manages to get out of difficulty situations and creates a miracle, no matter the odds placed against him. 
I found him. At that very moment did Rakage's booming voice cut throughout barren wasteland. Turning his eyes to his directions, he saw him waving his hands rapidly. Don't worry Baruto, he's safe. Rakage assured the young boy with Sasuke noticing expirated sigh that followed. He's just resting. Sasuk watched Baruto's face go through various emotions. Sadness, surprise, relief and happiness, latter evident by beaming smile stretched across his face. His own lips turning upwards, Sasuk allowed purple chakra avatar to surround both of them as they began floating in the sky. Let's go. It took them little over 20 seconds to arrive at their desired destination. As they hovered above it, Sasuke slowly descended as Susanu Avatar, before it disappeared completely in small traces of purple aura, as it was never there to begin with. Dad! Baruto sprinted towards his father without a hint of hesitation, with Sasuke slowly tracing behind him. Ichiha's brow curic slightly as he noticed Baruto's hurried steps coming to a sudden halt. He realized why that is after he reached them. An awkward silence followed. A phantom wind blew through the void dimension, as all cages present had mixed expressions concerning the state of their hokage. Raymond Chan. Naruto muttered so in deep sleep as he laid on his right hip, so that his artificial arm or lack thereof was not displayed to small audience gathered around him. Scattered around him were storage seals that could be implemented on one's body or as part of clothing. Kanji on them was similar to Sasuke's wristbands, in which he has sealed shurikens laced with lighting chakra. Knowing fully well how dangerous being carrying the name of Utsutsuki can be, everyone aside from Sasuke expected their fellow cage to have sealed various weapons and tools necessary for combat. Even if one is seated behind a desk most of the time and isn't on active shinobi duty doesn't mean that they shouldn't be prepared for such situation can happen even in this peaceful era. Instead, gathered around Genin Turn cage were dozen instant ramen cups of all kinds of flavor. Really? A weak laugh escaped Chijiro's lips. Idiot. Sasuke let out a soft exasperated sigh at the sight of his friend's sleeping form in makeshift bed created from earth style. Raymond aside, he is glad that he's safe. Was he really eating ramen in this situation? Kuritsuchi said in a soft voice full of disbelief, her previous motivated expression at prospect of a exciting fight turned sour at the image ahead of her. Where are the enemies? From the looks of it he is fine, albeit tired, which is to be expected considering whose his opponents were. Scanning his surroundings, Sasuke couldn't find and trace of Utsutsuki trio that wreaked havoc upon their village. And yet his onyx eyes narrowed at black diamond-shaped mark, that rested on open palm of his friend, aura it emanated making him unnerved. It felt similar to curse seals Arachimaru produced, and yet completely different at the same time. Its shape reminded him of his wife's biacum, and for what he could tell from first glance, has similar function. It's more mysterious and dangerous, however. Sasuke began approaching Naruto to wake him up in order to get the full report of the events that transpired, but stopped when he felt movements approaching them. Smoothly sidestepping to the right, he watched Baruto landing feet first on his father's gut. Naruto's face twisted in pain would be hilarious to witness if not for his son's distressed state. Gah! Hokage jolted up from Earth's structure immediately, holding his stomach in pain from the hit he received. Kurama was laughing his ass off in his mindscape, but Naruto ignored it in favor of dodging a fist that followed. Stupid old man. Talk to him. He heard him advise, his gruff tone losing all humor. Trust me, it's long overdue. Your child is hurting. I know, Dadabeo. I should have done this a long time ago. He raised his left hand as his son's leg impacted it. A loud noise echoing all around them. Baruto backflipped, making a famous cross-shaped seal that made an exact duplicate of him appear in mid-air from plum of white smoke. His clone took initiative, sending axe kick towards older blonde, which also ended up being inhibited. B Baruto, he called out. But his son wouldn't listen. Hima, mom and I thought you died to those pale bastards. He cried, throwing his punches wildly. Instead of trying to find a way back home to us, you've been eating ramen and sleeping. How should he react to this? How should anyone react to this situation? Baruto really thought his father ended up dying to those Utsutsukis only to find out that he's alive and well, 
sleeping after eating countless cups of that hideous excuse of a food, doesn't he have any sense shame to sleep carelessly whilst everyone else back home thought the worst happened to him? Gritting his teeth, Baruto became more and more frustrated with each of his attack getting blocked or dodged. He shouldn't be so surprised about his dad's attitude. He is dad that preferred office work over his own family. Dad that, even when he spends time with them, has to leave shortly with some half-assed claim of entire village being his family and needing him. Dad that broke his man-to-man -man promise and sent a shadow clone to his own daughter's birthday. Dad that is here. His movements became slow and rigid, seemingly losing all of their strength and accuracy they had few moments ago. I understand that it's hard not having your father around on important days. Baruto stopped his approaches and stood several meters away from his father, staring at his worried face. Blue eyes blinked slowly at first, but soon began to blink rapidly, desperately trying to stop another flow that wanted to leak through from his increasingly puffy eyes. But it's different for you. You have a father that is actually here. And yet he almost lost him. Naruto rushed at his son, kneeling down to his level and wrapped his single arm around him, bringing him into a hug. I'm sorry Baruto. Baruto sobbed into his shoulder feeling emotionally exhausted from this day, but incredibly relieved that his dad is alive and well. You should be, stupid old man. He muttered so into his shoulder, initiating few giggles from small audience that watched their interaction. After he separated from him and rubbed his eyes to wipe away few remaining tears, he offered him a small smile, which Naruto returned with his own. We'll be right back. He placed a hand on his son's shoulder as he faced Sasuke in four cages. We need to have a conversation that is long overdue. All of them had a look of understanding on their faces, with Sasuke sufficing them with a nod. With that done, both of them disappeared in swirl of leaves at seemingly untraceable speed. They were once again back at the battlefield on which Naruto defeated Mamashiki and Kanshiki. Feeling more mentally fatigued than physically, Naruto decided to sit down on an edge of a huge creator, motioning with his remaining hand for his son to do the same. Baruto, his mind now clear and focused, finally took notice of his father's lack of limb and immediately rushed to his side, concern lining his features. Dad, your arm. Ah Naruto let out a surprised yelp when he got but tackled by Baruto, that was looking him over. It got severed during the fight. Don't worry about it. How could I not? His son distanced himself after a few more seconds and deadpanned at logic behind his father's statement. You lost an arm. It's a big deal, Dad Abasa it all right? It's could have been a lot worse, you know. Naruto fixed his gaze on his natural, now only one arm, feeling grateful that it didn't sustain any damage in the fight. Soon after those words left his mouth did the Hokage realize where exactly he's gone wrong. He cursed himself inwardly for his stupidity. Panic surged through him upon seeing Baruto averting his eyes downwards, his eyes blistering with barely restrained tears upon registering implication behind his words. Moron. Choose your words more carefully. He could hear Karama's scolding tone echoing inside his head. It would send a wrong message if it was the other one that got severed. He let out a nervous chuckle, hoping against hope to fix this situation. Upon seeing Baruto's perplexed expression, he elaborated. I would have ended up with two bandon charms. It would look bad for Kanoha if they had semi-mumified Cripple as their leader. Some might doubt my ability to lead the village if I only had 50% of my limbs. Baruto couldn't help but let out a soft snort as he imagined such scenario. His dad engrossed with paperwork with two arms replaced by artificial ones. You would be even more incompetent. No need to be so harsh. The Hokage pouted before noticing that his son wore his old worn out jacket from childhood. It suits you. Do I look at least bit cooler? Even more than before. Baruto blinked, looking surprised. So you did pay attention to me before? Of course. Naruto responded louder than he intended, before a look of shame settled upon his features. Baruto for everything that happened until now, I am truly sorry. Dad. By wanting to protect everyone I ended up ignoring my family. I never tried to understand you and caused pain to you, your mother and sister. The Hokid bashfully rubbed his nape. I was also a hypocritical when I tried to scold you for doing pranks and getting into mischief when I was no better at that age. You also played pranks? Baruto appeared astonished upon such revelation. It was so unforeseen. His strict father that more often than not certified him for pulling pranks did the same thing? He just never striked him as a person who would get into mischief and behave in such manner. Yet another thing that he doesn't know about his dad. He swore already to change that, and now is perfect time to do so. 
Yeah, Baruto directed attention to his father. I often painted stupid and idiot on Hokage Monument and terrorized numerous shopkeepers and other villagers that wronged me by vandalized their establishments and houses. A eh, you really went that far? At least two times a week, Naruto freely admitted. Look of scorn on their faces were almost unbearable, but I as long as I got attention, no matter what kind, I was fine with it. Why would you go to such extremes to get attention from random villagers? Because Naruto unintentionally hesitated. Nobody could fault him for that. However, his childhood was anything but easy. Constant stares and whispering that followed him since he was a toddler left a huge toll on his psyche, even if he didn't show it until his teenhood. Such treatment caused him to develop split personality at some point that he barely managed to overcome and then eventually accept. Naruto always acknowledged that for quite a while, he operated on a gray line of his integrity and hatred that was manifesting itself over time. Deep inside his subconsciousness, one wrong move, one mistake or one bad day could have pushed him over the edge. Human's mind is a fragile thing, especially at such a young age. Sasuke was perfect example of that. Even on spiritual level they are two sides of the same coin, Sasuke being yin to his yang. Looking at how his spiritual brother was back then, Naruto wondered how it would be if their roles were reversed. Drowned in darkness with intent to destroy everyone who wronged him in his childhood as a only goal, Naruto knew that entire village would suffer. He is positive that Kurama being vengeful as he was back then, would gladly capitalize on his trauma and emotional weakness urging him to break the seal. His father and mother would interfere, of that he's certain. However if they would be able to guide him from that path is a completely different story. His mom, being high temper as any Uzumaki would try to beat him senseless as a last resort. Even if they used force to stop him and Kurama is sealed again, nothing would prevent Naruto from doing it again. After all his father and mother's chakra were limited for one use, his death followed by Kurama's freedom and Kanoha's destruction, fourth war would possibly happen and even if it doesn't Black Zetsu would somehow manage to convey Abido to revive Madara, who would cast infinite Tsukuyomi and eventually get backstabbed, reviving Kagaya that would rule over this realm indefinitely. Until others arrive, Naruto thought, his lips set into a grim line. He is positive that Mama Shiki and Kinshiki, even with the help of the third one, wouldn't be able to defeat Kagaya, that would amass even more chakra over time. But others are something else entirely if Mama Shiki's words are anything to go by. Naruto rubbed his scalp, deciding to put thoughts of inevitable alien invasion aside for the time being. He is waiting his options right now. Naruto rarely, if ever wanted to talk about his grim childhood, but Sasuke said it the best when they spoke about him mentoring Baruto his son doesn't know him, or better yet the Naruto he used to be. He knows rumors and stories circling around elemental nations, but never did his father sat him down and told him stories of old. Naruto felt incredibly remorseful upon having such thought. Part of the reason why he never told stories of the past to Baruto was because he didn't want put all that extra pressure on him. Naruto always felt bad upon hearing his son being compared to him and as a result feeling inferior, even if he was more talented and skilled when they were the same age. Baruto learned wind and lighting style in academy by the time he was 10. Even Kakashi acknowledged his power and praised him for his skills. That I Baruto mentioned even furthers his already great potential. Naruto at the age of 10 managed to only create a clone that was at brink of death the moment it poofed into existence. There is no comparison when it comes in terms of skill and potential, his son exceeds him by far. He taught him basics because, being slightly naive, he thought he wouldn't need more. They were living in era of peace where bloodshed the past shinobi conducted would not happen again. And it won't Naruto will make sure of that. But otherworldly threats, gods, aliens, different dimensions? That's a whole different story. They need to be ready for the worst even if he doesn't want children, his child to experience war. At any rate, Naruto already promised himself that he would make it up to him, Hinata and Himawari. And what better way to do so than to share part of his past, no matter how grim it is, or how uncomfortable he may be while telling it. Naruto has sneaking suspicion that being so close to death after combating two Utsutsuki threats alone, made him so bold. People often say that when one is close to death their entire life flash before their eyes. That is far from the truth. Naruto in that final clash between Rasengans saw the most important things in his life. His comrades and friends were present of course, but his family was the center of it. He decided. His son is a smart and mature shinobi, and it is high time he starts to treat him as such. 
Seemingly minutes passed during his internal decision-making while in reality only 10 seconds went by, letting out a soft sigh, Naruto resolved himself one last time, because they were the only one that took notice of me even if it was bad kind of attention, corked brow was his only response, you studied about Bij Genjin Tricky during your time at the academy? Ah, Baruto had a look of realization upon hearing his question. It was a short part of our curriculum, but we did study about them. You have kicked the inside of you. No, he corrected himself. It's Kurama? Naruto gave a nod. That's right. But back then due to tension between villages and people of elemental nations inability, fear and reluctance to understand them, there was deep prejudice against them. Baruto listened on, feeling of dread forming input on his stomach, as he slowly began to grasp implication behind his father's words. Sage of the Six Paths created Bijk from remnants of old Satsuki Kagaya's chakra. Before his death the sage and his followers built temples in nine different regions of the world where they could live and be protected. The Bijk were originally created not only to prevent the Jkbais and to extension Kagaya's resurrection, but also to maintain and balance peace. But it didn't work out like that. His son interrupted as he fiddled with a stone he found nearby in order to calm his rising nerves. Kagaya was revived in Fourth Great Ninja War, but we managed to stop her. Naruto told him and continued his tale. Over the centuries, humanity failed to recognize the Bijka's sapient individuals, instead seeing them only as monsters, demons, or mindless beasts worthy of fear and disdain. Because of their immense power, they were sought out by humans to be used as weapons in times of war. The beasts resented this treatment and came to hate humans, at times willingly becoming the monsters they were viewed as. In order to harness their power, the villages began sealing them into humans, creating their own Jinchkriki. Phantom Wind softly blew upon desolated planet after his explanation concluded. Baruto felt heavy lump bury itself in his throat as he assimilated information given to him. If Bijk were feared, then same could be said for their containers. He was afraid to ask out of discomfort he felt about such subject, and about his dad's own unwillingness to talk about his past. But he almost lost him, a fact THST still leaves him unnerved. Dad himself realized that, which is why he reached out to him now. Listen Baruto, your father was full of weaknesses, he was a good for nothing, but he pulled himself up with his own strength, and became Hokage, you don't need to understand who Naruto is now, you need to know the Naruto who made it all the way here. Remembering Sasuke Sen's words, Baruto decided to press on. As Kurama's Jinchuriki you suffered the same animosity from the villagers? Every day. Naruto freely admitted, there was no going back now. With another hefty sigh, he pulled himself back from the edge of a creator and crossed his legs, his son following right after, eagerness and empathy painting his features. Kurama was forced to attack village on day of my birth, after he was released from my mother Kashina, who was the previous Jinchkriki. Many people died, my mom and dad included, and Kurama was sealed into me. You never met your parents? Hokage's son asked in a low tone. Regret accompanied his question as he remembered rude comments he made about his grandfather. He knew that they died when his dad was very young, but he was never told that he never met them. Only chakra imprints they left in the seal that was supposed to keep Kurama at bay and during the war, through the usage of Kenjutsu, he explained. I was about four or five years old when my status as a Jinchkriki was outed to the public. It happened so suddenly. The wariness they adopted whenever I was around them, contempt and disdain they showed me confused me, and I often wondered what I did wrong to deserve such treatment. Children weren't aware of it, but their parents still forbade them from playing with me, with great exception on Narashikaku. Aside from Ichiraku family and occasionally Shikamaru and Choji, for the most part of my childhood I was always alone. He can still recall it clearly. He sat on that swing alone, watching other kids playing with each other, and being with their parents with happiness and joy blooming upon their faces. Naruto always envied them, and often wondered how it's like to have a family to come home to. It makes it all that tragic that now he neglected what he gained. How did you do it? Hmm. Baruto clenched his fist, tightening fabric of his pants under his firm grip. Naruto looked at his son, his eyes reflecting sympathy and regret. How did you manage to overcome their mistreatment of you? Weren't you angry at them? Without a doubt, Dadabeo. He ran a hand through his short blonde hair. To be honest, I drifted for some time. I almost ended up turning against everyone. But, his eyes averted upwards, staring at the red sky. I formed bonds. I could have taken a path of vengeance and hatred upon them, and it would be easier to do so, but that would in turn make me a hypocrite. 
No matter how justified it would seem, he remembered a person that shaped his nindum. Back in my genin days, our first mission was to escort Bridge Builder to the Land of Waves. There I met a boy named Haku that was adorned with great misfortune throughout his life. An orphan like me, after losing his parents he was found by a person that decided to took him in. When we met he told me that a person becomes truly strong when they have something important to protect which greatly impacted me. I chose to treasure what I had and I took his advice to heart and even if he isn't with us, I still remember it to this day. He sounds like a nice guy, Baruto admitted understanding indication behind Haku's fate and why his dad remembered his advice even after all these years. With such hand dealt to him from birth, he really suffered. No wonder he treasured everyone. He was the coolest. You said that entire village is your family? Was Haku one of the people that inspired you? Naruto remained silent for a while, dropping his gaze while his lips twitched upwards. Of course, Databeo he stood up and declared resolutely to never give up on my word because that's my ninja way. Boruto couldn't help but smile and be inspired by such declaration. It almost felt like something out of Kajimasa movies he often watched. I should have told you all this sooner I'm really sorry for breaking my word by not coming home for Himawari's birthday, neglecting you. No. Boruto interjected as he stood up and faced his father. I do expect you to make it up to Himawari, but the truth is that I always wanted to know. I don't know much about you, dad. Deep down I knew that all those stories I heard about you weren't exaggerated. My pride just wouldn't allow me to ask you about it. It's hard Databasa, always being compared to you, even when I accomplish something with my efforts they say it is expected and that I ride Hokage's coattails. I feel like people only see me as your son and nothing more. I'm not you. That's right, you're not me, Naruto honestly said, adopting more serious expression. Baruto looked dejected, thinking of his comment as an insult. That isn't a bad thing, quite the opposite actually. A strong hand clasped on his shoulder as he locked his eyes with his father's. You can only be you and in some ways you are even better than I would. You are well behaved to others and have more potential than I had at your age. Your mother and I would support you regardless of your choices, even if you didn't chose to become a shinobi. It's okay to take inspiration from someone, but above all else you need to forge your own path in life. Think of what you want to do. Baruto, you were always upfront with your feelings and decided to do things your way. I heard how you managed to prove in Academy that you are more than my son. Don't listen to negative things others say to you. I never did and it turned out great. I accomplished many things some would say are remarkable. I became Hokage, but most importantly after my troublesome past I managed to rose above it and have you, Baruto. Upon hearing such words, he felt numerous feelings ranging from happiness to relief. His vision blurred a little, really? He asked in a small voice, wiping at small tears that managed to pass through. Really? My family is the best thing that ever happened to me. For that I'll always be grateful, and from now on I promise to show it more. Baruto smiled at that, but after all that occurred tried to be more sensible and understanding of his father's position. It's okay if you're busy with Hoke at work, but if not often, I want you to be there for important days. Maybe even tell me more about your past. He gestured around. I highly doubt you managed to get so strong to defeat those two only by eating Raymond and sitting around all day. Naruto laughed heartily. Of course I did. Raymond is beautiful creation sent from heavens that binds us all and gives us strength when we need it. No need to be so dramatic, Databasa. His son sweat dropped at his antics. Raymond is okay once in a while. Diversity is a spice of life, as CHNCHN would say, especially when she's referring to food. His dad doesn't understand that and treats it as a divinity. Baruto is sure that there is a story behind it, and he will eventually ask him about it. But are you sure? Baruto returned his attention to his dad. It really is a long story. Naruto warned playfully. He extended his hand, his fist tightened and conviction shining in his eyes. That wasn't present that last time Baruto tried to convince him. Man to man promise? They fist bumped. Naruto prepared himself with Baruto doing the same, and in an instant they were once again before four cages and Sasuke. That was quick, Koritsuchi commented with a small frown. She seemed still upset about this situation. Although you have to be the expert. Naruto rubbed his head bashfully at that. He's up Tsuchikij Dono. Mizukij said with a smile. You can't really fault Hokage Dono for fighting them to protect the rest of us. Let me mope in peace, please. She huffed at Chijuro's words, resulting in a chuckle from the young cage. First major fight in 15 years and I missed it. 
sorry. Naruto bashfully rubbed his head. One should not seek war, especially during Year of Peace. Gara advised. Yeah, yeah I know. Koritsuchi waved her hand in defense. Naruto took note of her contentious tone. At any rate, it seems our, or rather your work here is done, but can you inform us what exactly happened here? He didn't like it one bit. Sensing rising tension, Reikage decided to say something about it. I know this might not be ideal place, but a quick summary should suffice. Darui added his two cents. No doubt that you are tired after this ordeal, but you must realize how this looks to the rest of us. Baruto frowned at this, but kept his lips shut. He doesn't want to intervene and add unnecessary fuel to the fire. Naruto exchanged a glance with Sasuke, catching a skeptic look in his eye. He did notice Kuritsuchi's demanding demeanor, but he couldn't help but admit that it is justified to some degree. From intel Sasuke gathered Kagaya was afraid of these two, and he defeated both of them after taking a tailed beast bomb to the face. Naruto is known worldwide due to his contributions in the war, and two years later against Tenari. He had to admit that regardless of his pacifist nature and his desire to help world through unity some countries are frightened by his power, with some smaller ones even calling him a tyrant. It really is ironically sad, since Naruto poured his efforts in helping smaller countries because of Nagato. He never wanted them to be so displeased, but it still happened. Fiasco with scientific ninja tool being outed before he had a chance to properly showcase it to others, and now Mamashiki's attack only worsened his image in eyes of other villages. Naruto knows he can always have faith in Gara and Derui, since he is on great relations with A and B. Kuritsuchi on the other hand, displayed a competitive side to her similar to her grandfather, and he can't help but notice that Chijuro also seemed uneased by all of this, albeit to a lesser degree. Rightfully so, but it still hurts to be reason others are afraid. Such thing is similar to his childhood, but despite that, Naruto still can't help but place his trust in people. Your inventions and naive misplaced trust you have in people will only prove to be your downfall in the end. Mamashiki's ominous warning echoed in his mind. He hated how it made sense. I can't fault none of you for that. Naruto began after clearing his throat. So what do you want to know? How did you exactly Kuritsuchi seemed like she wanted to choose proper words to ask her question. They tied me to a tree and began extracting Kurama from me, but had a hard time doing it. Naruto explained. Eventually I broke free fired a Rasen Shuriken, but it got absorbed by bigger one Kinshiki through use of his chakra weapons. Both of them could absorb Jutsu and Mamashiki could unleash it with twice its original power, but had harder time doing it with Shadow Clones, which is why I use Classic Divide and Conquer strategy. Shadow clones are fast and nimble, so they couldn't afford leaving themselves open for an potentially fatal attack, whole absorbing them, Gara deducted. Exactly. Naruto snapped his finger and pointed at his friend. Even if they use Renengan, I overwhelmed them eventually through trickery and unpredictability. Kenshiki was tougher of the two, but both he and Mamashiki weren't up to par with Kagaya, Madara or even Abito in their Ten Tails form. Cryptanalysis team managed to decipher part of Kagaya's scroll. Sasuke's voice spoke up. It would seem that she wrote it before she took the godfruit. In that case it made sense why she was afraid of them. It is an assumption, but Kagaya must have been weaker than them before she ate the fruit. If she went through such efforts to stop them, Shijuro explained. Then a morbid thing happened. This gathered attention of everyone present. Mamashiki turned Kinshiki into a fruit and ate him. What? Baruto couldn't help but exclaim. They were both wounded and Kinshiki willingly gave up his life for him. He went through a transformation of some sorts, his chakra grew exponentially, and he explained that this is the law of Utsutsuki clan. Kuritsuchi turned to her fellow cages. So she was supposed to become food for those guys? A chill went through her spine. She can't believe they are supposed to deal with these cannibalistic extraterrestrials. Or fruit was supposed to be delivered to them in the first place. Sasuke theorized, their clan most likely operate in manner similar to hierarchy system. It is a worthy conclusion based of information gathered. Gara said and looked at Naruto. Thank you for your efforts. I know that it wasn't easy. That it wasn't. Naruto smiled. I'm just glad it's over. At least it wasn't dull. Darui said and they had to laugh at that pun. Space-time ninjutsu really gives you a headache. Teleporting from one location to another discombobulates everyone that use it as a mean of transportation. Unlike Shunshin that is a high-speed movement in same dimension, your entire perception gets thrown off as you travel between different worlds with this jutsu. Sasuke got accustomed to it as he uses the technique frequently, but others weren't so lucky. 
Side effects last for a few short seconds, but it can still be unpleasant. Destroyed Planet was left behind in favor of his home. Soft sunlight graced his features as he felt his feet land on solid tiles of Hokid Mansion. He looked up, seeing various faces of his friends and family, their expression varying from confused, relieved and happy. Before he had time to say anything, a dark blur slammed into him and wrapped her hands around his waist. Pop your arm. Her blue eyes shimmered with barely restrained tears. It's fine it was a fake one. I missed you Hima. He softly said, kneeling down and embracing her with his lone arm. I'm really sorry for missing your birthday. She stood back and shook her head causing her dark hair to softly swish in the wind. I'm just glad that you made it home safe. I understand that your job is important. It's fine. No, it's not. He planted a soft kiss on her forehead. I should have been with all of you, especially during important days. I promise you now that I will be home more often. Really? Himwari asked in a hopeful tone that made him feel all that worse for neglecting her. Of course. After things settle, we will start by spending an entire day as a family to celebrate your and Baruto's birthday. He grinned. It will be fun, Dadabeo. Thank you Papa. She exclaimed ecstatically. Baruto. With tears in her eyes, Hinata rushed towards her son and hugged him firmly. Are you okay? Are you hurt anywhere? Mom, relax, I'm fine. He assured her, returning the hug. We didn't even get to fight enemies. Dad took care of it before we got there. He did? She stood back and observed her firstborn, that had a proud expression on his face. It took everyone by surprise. He looked in their direction, seeing his dad and sister interact. Dad really is amazing, isn't he? He always was, she remembered with a fond smile. Even more so than his strength, your father's optimism, determination and love towards his friends made everyone want to follow him and be by his side. Baruto's face was scrunched up in thought as he registered his mom's words. The way she said it almost sounds like, it's almost like you. Hinata's voice spoke again. Baruto has to admit that it was scary. Not to be compared to his dad, he had time to reflect on his dad and his own actions in the last day but the way she seemingly read his mind. It's uncanny. After few moments, Baruto dismissed it as a coincidence, but as Mitsuki noted from his and Shikadai's behavior, mothers are scary. So it's really up in the air. I guess that we're similar, but not the same, his mother stated. You might have inherited his hard and boisterous attitude, but as your grandfather said, in terms of prodigious talent and your insightfulness, you are more like Niji Niasen and Yandame Sama. He mentioned something like that. Baruto's smile turned slightly strained. Dad really suffered in his childhood. Silence reigned after his statement with only faint voices of people chattering on the balcony being heard. Oh, Hinata's lips were pressed into a thin line. I suppose he told you. After her son nodded, she led him away to the railings of the balcony overseeing the editor village. Dark clouds mostly cleared as sun shined even brighter than before. Baruto found such view symbolic considering that threat past and life can continue with sense of normalcy. He is reluctant about his past. Even to me he doesn't really want to talk about it. From what he told you, you can conclude yourself why that is, she began. Baruto understood that now. It's no wonder why he isn't willing to talk about his past when his present is infinitely better and brighter. He still feels that he has a right to know about it, and he's thankful that his dad told him, no matter how difficult that may have been for him. Baruto now understands him better. Your dad had a tragic childhood. He was ostracized for things he couldn't control and was hated by majority of the village. In spite of that he rose above it and was always straightforward in his beliefs and dreams. He was relatable to me, because as a heiress I was under extreme pressure from my clan, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't live up to their expectations. That's awful, he said. Was that during the time grandpa was stricter? It was wartime, so it was expected an incident in the past forced grandpa to adopt such demeanor. I was shy and meek and couldn't do anything right, but looking at Naruto's optimistic attitude, I eventually became inspired by him and tried harder. He had that effect on many even then. She brushed a strand of hair behind her ear. Of course, it's one of the reasons why I fell in love with him, mom. He blinked in shock and gained a sly smile. You were in love with dad ever since you were a kid? I she stammered, looking embarrassed as ever. She shouldn't have said that. Were you dating since then? Well he had a crush on Sarada's mother, and then had a first and second kiss with Sarada's father. There was incident with some crazy woman that wanted to suck all his chakra out through a kiss, and then he almost married the Kanoichi of Natashiko village. Hinata inwardly monologued with a sweat drop. Naruto really did charm a lot of women during his youth, albeit unknowingly. 
Her face darkened as she recalled yet another one that came along and had audacity to ask then, her fiancé to impregnate her because of some foolish promise he made four years prior, that he wasn't even aware what it entailed. Xion. That dumb bitch. Um, Baruto fidgeted nervously, and Hinata realized she spoke that last part aloud, so that's a no? Hinata merely smiled as she and her son moved towards her husband, I took care of it. Oh, Baruto left it at that and moved to greet his sister. Thank goodness you're okay, she rested her head on his chest tears from before gathering once again. Are you hurt? That's supposed to be my line. She looked up as Naruto wiped tears that stained her face. You are the one who fought them, and now you barely stand. Well Kurama did say I'm rusty, to say the least. Deep voice from within echoed, Naruto chose to ignore that comment for the time being. Besides, I had worse, he said. That's not so reassuring. She stared with a smile on her beautiful features and looked him over. At any rate, we need to get you checked up. Hinata I need to tea. Later, she interrupted, you are injured and this is not a time nor place for it. Naruto complied reluctantly, okay, well at least it isn't your original arm. Sakura tried to find positive in the situation, all things considered, it could have been worse, I guess. Naruto simply replied as he was set on bed shirtless, his dirty and damaged orange jacket discarded as Sakura removed small remains of his artificial arm. They weren't only ones in the room, Kakashi was across from him, nonchalantly sitting with crossed legs as he read his favorite book. Sasuke was by the window overlooking the village with indifferent expression with Shikamaru by his side. Hinata helped Sakura out a bit and then took kids back home in order for them to rest. This day was emotionally exhausting for all of them, and both he and his wife didn't want them to overwhelm themselves even more. They protested, but eventually relented after he assured them that he will be home soon. We won't have that here. Sakura grew a tick mark as she admonished Shikamaru, who pulled another cigarette from his box. No smoking allowed. Either go outside or go through the window. With a huff and quiet mutterings of troublesome under his breath, Shikamaru opened a window and went outside through it. This room was connected to a small balcony, so Shikamaru leaned next to a window, so that he could be a part of discussion that will be held soon. He searched his pants for a lighter and cursed when he couldn't find any, inwardly berating himself for misplacing it in all of this mess. This really is a bad day. Small orange light caught his attention, and he turned his head to it, seeing tip of Sasuke's finger burning in fire chakra. Saying his thanks, Chikamaru inclined his head through a window and inhaled deeply, savoring burning sensation in his chest. All done. She nodded, placing all that was left of Hashirama arm in disposable container. Kakashi's book closed shut, Sasuke I gained focus, and Shikamaru looked over his shoulder, listening intently while at the same time appearing as nonchalant smoker. It's time for business. Sakura can you please stay here? Naruto requested, earring and questioning look from Pink Kanoichi. We need your opinion on the matter. Fine. She agreed. Naruto looked at every occupant of the room, or in Shikamaru's case, outside of it, he took a deep breath and began retelling the tale of how he fought Utsutsuki, how their clan operated by sacrificing themselves for power, and eventually, how he managed to defeat them. So there are others, huh? Kakashi muttered, concern evident in his eyes. Without a doubt. I don't think he would be dishonest for the heck of it, especially at his deathbed, Naruto answered. If what he said was true and there really are others out there, they will find out about Mamashiki and Kinshiki's demise, Sasuke grimly stated, expression mirrored by others, not to mention that third one, Yurashiki is still out there, so there won't be much time if he informs them, Kakashi finished that trail of thought, unless they decide to humor us like they did for the past thousand years, time is of the essence, he leaned back in his chair, thoughtful look on his face as he stroked his chin, but I feel that there is more to that, Kakashi-sensei, are you saying that they intentionally didn't come sooner? Sakura asked. It is more than likely. He responded to his former student. Such theory unnerved everyone. That would mean that they kept eye on them, but for whatever reason decided not to act on it. Either that, or they were preoccupied with other planets. Shikamaru decided to speak. But it is not so likely because, if they searched for chakra all these years, a planet with billions of people that have chakra would attract them and be their top priority. Sasuke nodded at his reasoning, chakra of all bijk are incredibly potent, and Naruto did mention that Mamashiki when he ate Kinshiki still seemed overall weaker than Kagaya. Kinshiki seemed like an experienced warrior that only gained said experience through battle. From that we can conclude that they harvested planets for quite some years now. If our planet is richer with chakra than others, why wait so long to come here? 
After Sasuke's comment, Naruto glanced at his hand four-point black diamond-shaped mark reflecting his narrow blue eyes. He wordlessly lifted his hand, displaying it for everyone to see. Sakura's hand unconsciously went to her forehead, tracing a mark of similar shape. One more thing to it just before Mama Shiki died, we found herself in an astral plane of some sorts. Astral plane? Kakashi recalled his experience with Ibido during the war. Like a limbo? Something like that. Naruto confirmed, placing his hand down and putting on a white shirt Sakura gave him. He said and I quote, Remember this, those who defeat gods cannot remain ordinary individuals. Then my final Rasengan continued, shot him up in the sky, and finally killed him. After that this diamond mark was on my palm. Silence reigned after his explanation, each Kanoha citizen thinking over implications behind Otsutsuki's actions. It soon came to a halt. Transfer of power. Huh. Shikamaru, Sakura and Kakashi turned their attention to Sasuke, an unconscious twitch to his jaw. Kurama confirmed it. He could sense a third presence in my body. Kakashi let out a sigh. It seems that problems always have to follow no matter which era. What once were tensions between hidden villages are now fights with gods and occasional drug lords. This incident being one of the few Ninja Academy didn't prepare them for. Based on intel gathered, a theory puzzled itself quickly in his head, an alien body snatcher gave his power to Naruto with obvious malicious intent. From his recap of events that transpired in different dimension, this Mama Shiki decided to bestow Mark to him because he isn't ready for others. Rakudame had no doubts that it is half-truth at best. There has to be more to it than what, and he is willing to bet his restored left eye to it. From looks Hensa others have, they too came to same conclusion. Shikamaru exhaled deeply and threw filter on the ground and stomped on it with much more force than needed. It isn't fair at all. Such bad luck always following Naruto and now after everything he endured that cycle, had to repeat itself again. Damn it. Sakura scoffed, agitated at this development. Naruto had to suffer with burden of being Kurama's Jinchkriki for good 17 years of his life. He lost himself countless time in that power, and almost lost his life because of it. Now he runs risk of the same damn thing happening because of Mamashiki. Sakura doesn't want her friend to get hurt and go through that horrible sensation of essentially being trapped inside your own body. Now only to a much greater scale as creature from same clan as Kagaya is somehow third occupant of his being. She doesn't want to see him hurt. It is a sentiment everyone here shares. Sakura. She turned her head to the left, hearing the voice of her husband calling her. He seemed sharp and determined, even more so than usually. This might be groundless hypothesis, but is it possible that there is some connection between Naruto's mark and your Baikon seal? Shikamaru took a long inhale from his second cigarette courtesy of Sasuke's fire jutsu. It is a common shape, but at this point in time we really can't rule anything out. That is actually the reason why I asked you to stay, Sakura-chan. Naruto admitted, I know it's a long shot, but everything might help. Sakura pursued her lips, going through her memories to find something of relevance that might link both of their marks. Tsunade Shishu did say that Bayakum has poorly understood history. She gathered attention of others. Her eyes widened at thought that popped into her head. It is I'm a few things that does make sense in this jumbled mess that became their lives in the last day and a half. Gathering he bearings, she continued. She said that it is an old jutsu dating back to the era of Sage of Six Paths. How can that be? The Hokid asked Kiation that was on their minds. I thought Ba Chan created Baikon Seal. Sakura shook her head, causing her pink strands to swish about. I know why you might think so, but Shishu got idea from her grandmother Yuzumaki Mito, that had a similar seal. Beyond that she acquired some old scrolls, and from them she managed to form the Baikum that is known today. Such rich history Shikamaru muttered, stroking his goatee. Implications of that are dreadful. Naruto stood up and went to a nearby water matching, and poured himself a glass of cold liquid chugging it in one go, and washing away dryness in his throat. Does that mean that another one existed with Otsutsuki seal? He rubbed his temple, feeling incoming headache. This is too much for anyone to bear. His sensei, seeing his shrewdent in such state decided to intervene. Ma, Kakashi waved his hand lazily, and stretched himself from long period of sitting in the chair. Crisis was averted for now. It's been a long day, and I suppose I can say for everyone that we need some well-deserved rest. Seconded, Shikamaru threw what has to be a fifth filter by now. Naruto made a mental note to talk about his smoking habits. He turned to him. I will deal with what's left of the paperwork. Go and be with your family. Thanks, I owe you one. 
You owe me a bunch. Sakura giggled at that and Sasuke smirked. His advisor Shunshine away from the balcony and Kakashi soon followed with a final goodbye. I will get home to Sarada, sole female of former Team 7 informed them. I know you two want to talk alone for a while, but don't take too long. Naruto you specifically need to get proper rest. She closed the door behind them. She knows us so well, Databeo. That she does. Two brother friends rivals stood alone in the room and Blonde dropped into nearby bed, leaning on his knees. Sasuke placed a comforting hand on his shoulder. Did Kurama mention anything else? He can feel his chakra, but he doesn't manifest himself. He is still on a lookout. It's all too much to take in. Zetsu incident was the biggest problem we had to deal with recently, and now this happens. It's exhausting. Since when did you lose your fortitude? Since I have to sit by the desk 20 hours a day. Naruto let out a heavy sigh. It's good helping the village, but sometimes I really wish to relax and just be there with my wife and kids. You have that chance now, I guess. He looked him. What about you? Sasuke frowned turning his gaze to the window. Yurashiki is still out there and with seal Mama Shiki left on you. There is one other person aside from God Aim that can have some information about it. That would be great and all. But it's fine to take it easy sometimes. Sasuke looked at him doubtfully that caused a twitch in his eye. I know that I'm not the best example of it, but I learned my lesson. Although I could have done that without fighting aliens and having my kid jump on my stomach. Sasuke snorted before he remembered something. Speaking of, I heard that Mizukij vouched for Baruto. He said that due to his efforts in stopping Ku Dedetan Kiri and his unusual approach in exams, his punishment will be less severe. He will still be suspended for two months after which he will go through probation and then be reinstated as genin. I mean, it wasn't right for me or anyone to demote him from shinobi rank because he cheated and used trickery, a prime example of what shinobi is. I'm surprised that nobody aside from you noticed. Our security needs to improve, Databeo. What makes you think I knew? Because you are too sharp to miss something like that. At any rate, you had your reasons for not outing him and all things considered, it turned out for the best. Even if the times change, soul of shinobi remains the same, Sasuke said. Even more so than trickery and cheating, your son has potential to be a strong shinobi, one that may surpass even us. Something other cages picked up on, without a doubt. The Hokage agreed readily. Thank you again for taking care of him. You helped me with Sarada, so it was the least I could do. Besides, I saw a bit of myself in Baruto when he tried to get your approval. I just couldn't ignore it. Naruto hummed, otherwise staying silent. Sasuke's troubles in his childhood and wanting to get acknowledgement and respect of Fugaku was something he didn't disclose with anyone he and Sakura, being only people that knew of it. They both looked through the window, seeing the twilight approaching. Sakura-chan mentioned that my arm will be ready in days time. Naruto casually mentioned, medical science advanced rapidly in over 15 years, and what would usually last weeks or even months can now be done in days. I was thinking that. Naruto. It would be a good thing, he continued, it's been 15 years. You will have more chakra for your dimensional traveling, and you won't have to restrict yourself to one arm. Seeing that he is still unsure, Naruto pressed on. You won't be out of chakra all the time. That earned him a glare. Don't give me that look. It's true. Against such opponents, we need to use everything we got. You already redeemed yourself Sasuke. You are the one that informed us of other old Satsuki out there, and our most valuable asset to the world. Without you, I would be trapped in other dimension, and I wouldn't be able to do a thing about it. Shadow of Kanoha contemplated the request. He knew that Naruto was determined than ever to protect the world against Otsutsuki threats, and if Mama Shiki's words hold even a shred of merit, they really will need everything they got. I will think about it. For Naruto that was a start. Few beats of silence passed before he spoke again. This match I won. Sasuke corked a brow at that. It was their little game to compete at everything ever since they were in Genin squad together. They resemble Kakashi and Guy in that way. From eating, drinking, kunai practice or even silly things such as who can hold their breath longer. Right now they were tied. I wasn't even competing. Duh. Naruto snipe white a grin on his face. Because I won, Databeo. Shadow of Kanoha sighed good-naturedly, smile visible from corner of Naruto's eye. Your logic to this day astounds me. They both laughed at that. I'm home. Naruto strolled into his home and took of his shoes, setting them aside in the corner of the room. He heard noise coming from the kitchen and made his way towards it, and saw his wife at hard work. 
Hey Hinata, he greeted her, giving her a soft kiss, where are the kids? The moment we came back home I noticed how tired they were, so I send them to bed, she responded turning down the stove, dinner will be done soon so I will wake them up then, Hinata placed a finger on her lower lip, scrutinizing every meal she's preparing, it's funny how a simple motion can still make someone so beautiful. Cream stew is done, dumplings as well Kakuni will be soon she looked at him regretfully, snapping him from his thoughts, I didn't have ingredients for Raymond, I'm sorry, he waved his hand frantically, don't apologize, I love everything you cook, Naruto shifted awkwardly in his seat, although, recently I wasn't here to try it that often, Dadabeo, no, you weren't, Hinata wiped her hands and sat on the chair opposite of her husband, this conversation was long overdue, I have a lot of men's to make, Hinata I dot, I'm sorry, Naruto turned his head downwards, I've been a terrible husband and dad lately, she shook her head almost immediately after those words left his lips, Hinata took his hand into her own and looked at him, white eyes reflecting his blue ones with steel hard strictness, you had your reasons that are valid and understandable to some degree, that doesn't make you bad father or husband, if anything you didn't have your priorities straightened, and THJNGS turned out as such a bad way, remergence of white zetsu put everyone in state of panic, and as a hokage you had to act on your duty. Former Heika heiress adopted a frown on her beautiful features. However, I won't lie and tell you that what you did on Himawari and Baruto's birthday was okay, it wasn't. You should have spared an hour or two and actually be there with us. It was hurtful and yet truthful Nantheolus. Naruto admitted that he had it coming. I've known you since childhood and we've been married for 13 years. Whatever it's training or life in general if you make a mistake you do your best to correct it. She smiled with a tilt of her head. This time it isn't any different, no? Naruto beamed and declared passionately. Of course not to Bayo. I promise to make it up to all of you. We will have a day for Baruto and Himawari's birthday to celebrate it properly. She chuckled at his behavior, even if he matured over the years, he still is that same Naruto from long ago, I know we will, they heard sound of footsteps and turned their head just in time to see Baruto and Himawari walked into the room, his daughter rushed at him the moment she saw him, Papa, they hugged, did everything turn out okay, Baruto asked as he took a sip from his water. Dinner is just done, Hinata informed them as she began setting the table, Himawari right behind him, let me help, no need to push yourself, Baruto said in a teasing voice, old man such as yourself needs all rest he can get, I am still in prime of my youth Dadabeo, rusty, shut up Karama, Naruto screamed inwardly, Ichihishin, those two words shut down every argument he could possibly have, Karama and Sakura-chan to this day won't allow him and Sasuke to forget it, enjoy this, he said in a softer tone, you deserve it, thanks Karama, Naruto responded with a grin, soon table was set with plate, utensils, and meals set on appropriate spot, dinner was served, and after such a long day it really is a sight to behold, thank you for the meal, they chorused and began eating, this was what Naruto always wanted ever since he was a child, maybe even more so than Hokage position, a place to call home and to belong to, a loving family that will always be there for him, Naruto resolved himself that he will again always be there for them, he won't be distant to them anymore, he doesn't care about Utsutsuki or people who bear their mark, if they want to endanger their hard-fought peace that many sacrifice themselves to achieve, Naruto will be sure to stop them. Future is in hands of next generation, but with his comrades, he will continue to build towards it, and make it as bright as possible. So that's for today thanks for watching subscribe our channel for more such interesting fanfictions.